home of the All-American Soapbox Derby in Akron, Ohio. To reach the national championships, thousands of boys and girls across the nation each year build coasting cars to race down local hills. The purpose of the Derby is to encourage craftsmanship and sportsmanship. In 1973, this 36-year-old family institution was rocked by scandal and almost died. The champion, Jimmy Gronin from Boulder, Colorado, had used a magnet in his car. Are you ready? Are you ready? For the first races in 1934, derby cars were crudely built of junk parts and soapbox wood. Now the best cars have precision engineering and sophisticated aerodynamics. Many are fiberglass. Speeds reach nearly 35 miles per hour on hills about 900 feet long. Competition for the championship trophy and scholarships in Akron has developed an intensity which invites much adult meddling. But the heart of the Derby is not there, but here, in towns like this, Ossining, New York, several hundred miles from Akron, where it is strictly a happy community event. And you can still find crude racers entirely designed and built by children side by side with slicker models. Only one winner from each town qualifies for the championships at Derby Downs. That means everybody else must lose some time in the course of the afternoon. Good luck, guys. But then nobody wins all the time at anything. If the work and competition are fun, there is room for chuckles at strange shapes, as well as cheers for winners. There is pride enough in just building the darn thing and racing it down the hill. Nineteen seventy-three was the second year in which girls participated. Hunched over in sit-up models or tucked down in laybacks, boys and girls looked and performed alike. In their cheering sections, though, there was a hint of which drivers were which. Chris Noyes had no national expectations, but hoped at least to do well locally. His older brother had won the Ossining race two years before. Chris was only 11. He had worked for nearly six months in his basement, sawing, sanding, drilling, gluing, balancing, and painting to make his red pine and oak car competitive. Adhering strictly to the rules, he built the car himself with expert guidance from his father, who's an industrial designer. Chris would have to win every heat of the afternoon to qualify for Derby Downs. But now Akron was far away as he wedged himself deeply into his layback car, buttoning up so only his eyes showed. His first race down the hill, a section of State Highway closed off for the local Derby, proved that his car was fast. Derby rules encourage safety. Tight steering and sure brakes are crucial, for the speeds of the cars make them potentially dangerous. Most accidents damage only the cars, but here the low-built racer chops spectators down like wheat, and one suffered a broken ankle. safer than most sports, not even the gentle derby is immune from painful mishaps. Chris is winning heat after heat on this June afternoon. All over the country in places like Hagerstown, Maryland, and Appleton, Wisconsin, and Bristol, Connecticut, and Boulder, Colorado, a few cars like Chris's are winning local races. Each heat victory is preceded and followed by tension and worry. Finally, Chris is sprung free on the ramp for the local championship run. He can see only dead ahead so snugly is he buried. 
the checkered flag tells him he's the winner. All those cheers and attention can be overwhelming. Now it's all official, all permanent. Akron lies ahead, but today Chris is champion of his hometown, and that is very important. Not far from Austining, in the tiny town of Carmel, New York, a friend of Chris's, Diane Mills, is on her way to the championship of Putnam County. Diane, too, is 11 years old. Like Chris, she does not expect to become a national champion, but to win here and qualify for the All-American Derby would be a lot. Diane and Chris would love to race each other, but the chance for such a meeting in the stiff competition of more than a hundred local race winners at Akron is remote. At least now, they would see each other in August at Derby Downs. Contestants are greeted with the customary hoopla at Akron, which has always been a good host. year's national champion, Bobby Lang Jr. from Boulder, Colorado, Jimmy Gronin's cousin, is Grand Marshal at Derby Downs. The huge pre-race parade of bands and floats and celebrities such as astronaut James Lovell and comedian Marty Allen give even the tiniest participants a proud context in which to strut. Don't forget, he's from Ohio. Started out in Middletown. Ohio State. And New York Six Bottoms this time. And the All-American Soapbox Derby is just about the biggest family event of the year in the Ohio town. One hundred thirty-eight local race winners, including entrants from Venezuela, West Germany, and Canada, join the festivities. In the pit area, drivers make final adjustments, seeking every possible advantage. They are allowed to tighten fittings, spin wheels, roll their cars back and forth, but not to buff wheels smooth or to apply any hardening substances on them. Way too rough. I'm about a pound. It is said that some contestants do that. It is said that some cars have axles of illegally hard steel or lead weights concealed in the fuselages or other things. But these are rumors. Everybody is going to try to win. I would like your cooperation at the race on Saturday in trying to see that this race is as clean as is humanly possible so that each of the champs have an adequate chance at that first prize money. 
The field of cars is smaller this year, perhaps because Chevrolet, which had always sponsored the races, has withdrawn. The championship of 1973 is sponsored by the Akron Chamber of Commerce, and the chamber is determined that it will be the best championship ever. The contestants, fresh from four days of fun and ghost stories and derby talk at a nearby YMCA camp, where they were happily separated from intruding adults, are finally racing. Cars are lined up on painted stripes with noses nestled against the metal restraining flaps, which drop on the starter signal. Down at the bottom of the 954-foot asphalt track, an electric eye photographs every finish. 12,000 fans cheer from the bleachers. Last year was the same. Cars are shooting disqualified. Last year was the first time I was out here, you know? And uh, yeah, I was very discouraged. She was spraying lighter fluid on her wheel, blowing the tires. Now, this is against the rule, right? It will take 152 car heats to determine the national champion. Chris is awed by the competition as he lines up to race in round one. Can he get by even his first test against a car from Des Moines, Iowa? Let's bring these two cars, these two down, 99 and 39. Rule number 13. Carefully get in and button up. Your feet near the brake and your helmet tucked in under the tail fin. What a quiet, lonely spot. An eternity before they drop the metal flap. Keep it in line, Chris. Concentrate. I think you'll find that there's no such thing this year as a lucky draw on a set of wheels. The starting gates have been calibrated. Shootings were taken with the transit. We'll shoot them again Saturday morning and certify that those starting gates have not been touched or tampered with. The settings are exactly the same. I don't know what else we can do to assure fairness. We've taken every possible security precaution that we know to assure each chair has a fair shot at walking away with that first prize. Chris Noyes from Austin in New York wins his first heat. Not only that, but his time is terrific. 27.68 seconds. It is the second fastest time of the entire 69 race round, behind only the time of the Boulder, Colorado car, driven by Jimmy Gronin. Diane hopes to be a professional gymnast someday, but that is not on her mind now. Her pink panther is. In a few minutes, gravity will prove how good a job she's done. Diane will race against a car from Spokane, Washington, which is just about as far from her home as you can get. Can she match such exotic competition? Slowly, the nose of the pink panther inches ahead. And stays. And wins. What a surprise. Easier than in Putnam County, where Diane had to survive two dead heats to win. They said I can leave up here as long as I want to spin the wheel. Who said that? Uh, I'm not sure who said it, but he said it. The field has been cut in half by the first round. Diane and Chris both advanced to round two. Now Diane's competition is from Las Cruces, New Mexico, another distant and unknown place. Diane wins again. She is one of five girls of the original 19 to survive the second round. But that is not the important thing. What is important is the chance to keep on winning. I always say that. Uh, how many years do you race? My first 
possible? Can her car truly be better than so many others? Does she dare to start thinking about the championship itself? And then Chris Noyes brings Aries to yet another triumph. Winning is unbelievable sometimes. the starting line when the metal flap is dropped. Jimmy, who is 14 but weighs only 68 pounds, seems more confident than most. He lives with the Lang family and in the past few years, his guardian uncle, Robert Lang, has proved to be an extremely skilled designer. Jimmy looks like the boy to beat. Disturbing information is now rifling through the crowd. Officials say Jimmy Gronin was buffing his wheels on the asphalt and have made him put on a new set. And they drilled into his car to remove excess weight. Race fans don't like to hear of such violations. This is the All-American Soapbox Derby, for heaven's sake. Finally, at the championship rounds, the top four cars. Both Diane and Chris have survived, along with Jimmy Gronin. And Diane's next opponent, Brett Yarbrough from Elk Grove, California, one of the favorites. Diane will need a super time. But no, it's not to be. Both are well-constructed, well-driven cars, but Yarbrough's is faster. Diane is finally beaten. And then Chris faces Jimmy Gronin. Chris is afraid he'll lose this time. As they ready their cars, Jimmy tells Chris not to be discouraged that he might win. But Chris knows that Jimmy's slowest time so far is better than his own fastest. Still, there's a chance, isn't there? Just like Jimmy, Chris has never been beaten, right? But he's beaten this time. Jimmy Gronin's car is too much. Chris has won more than he thought he would. Not quite as much as he dreamed. But there is one more chance for Diane and Chris. They will race together for third place. Ironically, one friend must now beat the other. But then, that's what competition is all about. It's an extremely close race. And at first, Chris has announced the winner. But it's a photo finish, and the photo reverses them. Diane is third in the All-American. Chris is fourth. So, for the championship, it is Jimmy Gronin against Brett Yarbrough. Adults designing these cars know their competition, and serious long-time competitors trade secrets and information. Here are two very fast cars. Brett is only 11, three years younger than Jimmy, but only three pounds lighter. Derby designers like their drivers small, because that allows them to arrange the dead weight of the cars where they work best with gravity. Jimmy's works a bit better, and he wins the national championship. The Derby image has been virtually destroyed. I mean, you, you walk the streets right now and ask 
a stranger what they think of football sure they don't think very much of it really and we've got to do something to change that are we running something a bunch of crooks or are we going to really put it back to where it's something for the kids Jimmy takes the platform to receive the trophy just as his cousin Bobby had done the year before. Uncle Bob Lang is on the winner's dais for the second straight year, but booing mars the ceremony. Rumors of cheating give the celebration for a victorious small boy an ominous undertone. A national scandal was about to break over the heads of the children who raced soapbox derby cars. A derby inspector found a small button in the headrest of Jimmy Gronin's car. Behind it was a small battery. The car was x-rayed, revealing wires running to the nose, where they wound around a hunk of metal. What had been discovered was an electromagnet used to give it a yank forward at the start. The magnet was activated when Jimmy leaned his helmet back against the button switch. A second fail-safe switch of two metal supports was turned on when Jimmy touched them together with his thumbs. A day after the crowd had left Derby Downs, Jimmy Gronin was disqualified. The first time ever for a champion. Brett Yarbrough was named the champion. Diane and Chris were elevated to second and third, and the rest of the finishers all moved up a notch. Robert Lang, Jimmy's uncle, admitted responsibility for the magnet. Jimmy's father is dead, his mother hospitalized. That is why he lives with the Langs. Robert Lang wanted him to win because of his high sense of competition and to reinforce Jimmy's sense of belonging to the family. In his own defense, Lang revealed publicly that cheating had been going on for years in the Derby. Cars built by adults, tires and axles tampered with, weights added. To even the odds in what seemed a dirty system, Lang had Jimmy cheat. By year's end, the Akron Chamber of Commerce quit the race, acknowledging that there had been widespread cheating and fraud. In the year of Watergate, the Derby, too, had become the victim of cynical adults for whom victory justified any means. The Derby had become too expensive, too sophisticated for the children. It is unfortunate that Jimmy Gronin must suffer the scars for the dishonor imposed by an older and colder world on what should have been an innocent childhood game. A smaller derby is back this year, perhaps because of the scandal. It will be more faithful to its purpose, to the boys and girls for whom just the thrill of running their homemade racers down a hill against each other is quite enough. In the derby and trying to bring it home all together now driving driving in the derby he's just driving driving all alone driving driving in the derby and trying to bring it home